Hey guys, welcome back. Sabbatical Chronicles, episode four. Today we got a new guest, Tom Anno Vintage. I'm curious what he got in his collection. Um, Tom, welcome to the show, man. Yeah, thank you for having me. I mean, uh, it's, a, it's a, of course a great honor. I've known you guys since the very beginning. Yep. So uh, yeah, I mean, we're all Dutch. So uh, yeah, the scene here is pretty small. So it's nice to have like uh, small collaborations and stuff. So yeah, right. Help each other out. Yeah, and, yeah. Just um, yeah. She mentioned you were there from the beginning. I think uh, our first pop up, you were there. So yeah, our first pop up and yeah. uh, the other pop ups as well uh, in yep. Amsterdam. And uh, I mean, since you guys started, like I know we're like two hundred followers on Instagram. Yeah, yeah. I was like, yeah, okay, these guys, they are doing it well, like uh, marketing and stuff. So, Thank you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Appreciate really, it. Re really good. Uh, Tell us, man, what, what do you do? Yeah, so as you guys may or may not know, I'm the guy behind NL Vintage. Um, yeah, I've, I've, I've been doing this for years now. Uh, I started back in 2016, mm -hmm. I believe. Um, well, officially, I mean, before that, I did like sell to friends and stuff, but uh, that's when I started my page on Instagram. And uh, yeah, it's been growing ever since. So just, uh, yeah, yeah, I mean. What are you, 10K followers now or something? Yeah, last year was crazy in terms of followers. Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, I, yeah I did some Instagram uh, advertising and stuff, mm -hmm. but uh, yeah, that was mostly just to sell more. I mean, yeah. I don't care about the followers as long as I can share and sell my stuff. I mean, that's yeah, of course, just that. Yeah, just 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 First share my stuff. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I mean, you guys, you have like three or four K followers now, and yeah. And, and yeah, I think you deserve way more, man. I mean, it's Thanks, just man. Uh, it. yeah. Let's see what happens. So yeah. if you don't follow us yet. Follow us. Follow them. <laughs> Follow NL Vintage. <laughs> so, all right. And um, if you would say, how many teas are in your personal collection? Um, yeah, I, I would say right now there are like 250, I think. Like, not, not in my personal, but in my whole collection. So yeah. In my personal collection, I, I don't have a lot of personal teas. So, maybe like 10 personal teas that I wear on, on rotation. And mm -hmm. some of them I sell later on. So, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah these teas I, I will show you in this video. They are like, some teas that, that, that I wear myself and some teas that I will probably sell in the future. So yeah, yeah. it's just, just teas that I like. Just um, keeping the rotation going. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I like one in, one out, is that the thing that you do? Yeah, well, for my personal collection, yes. Like, like I'm, I'm really into, into like, uh, yeah, avant-garde fashion mm -hmm. and stuff like, like, like unique stuff that, that, that only a few people um, have. So when you walk on the street, you're not like, oh, that guy wears the same stuff as me. No, no. Um, I also see you a lot in like a Ricky Owens. Yeah, and, yeah. Um, Rick Owens is a, is an inspiration for me. Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, a lot of designers that like that are quite unknown. That, yeah. That I'm into like artisanal designers and stuff. I mean, it's just, um, yeah. I like to experiment a bit with fashion. Like I've, mm -hmm. I've been like back in 2015, I was on the fear of God hype, you know, yeah, like, yeah. Like, like most <laughs> people were back in the day. And then I went on to like, like more like the, the, the Saint Laurent style, like mm -hmm. Eddie Slimane and stuff like, and the thing is, um, panties, they fit with Perfect. every style. Yeah, like yeah. that's, that's what I find. Like even with avant-garde style now, like I'm wearing a vintage tee right now. And in summer, you'll see me every day in a, in a vintage tee. So mm -hmm. that's, that, that's nice. I think it's also cool that you have like this, this switch up or like this, this melting pot from like a vintage tee and then maybe. Uh, yeah, uh, exactly. Or, yeah. Or whatever. It's, it's, it's just like, the, that's uh, the strength I think of a vintage tee is like that it's so iconic and, and you like yeah. really can um, express your, your music taste, but also your, mm -hmm. your taste in like, 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 how it looks like if it's yeah, yeah. faded or if it's like brand new but but you like for example a long sleeve with, with like yeah. things on the sleeves prints like it's it, it can look so it can elevate your outfit for sure all so, right yeah. nice man i think it's uh ready for yeah so my first, uh, sure. first team so first up we have this wow iconic i i think i this tea doesn't need any explanation nope. it's a sepultura roots tea um, I mean, yeah, it's, it, it, it is, I don't know what to say about this tea. It's just, it's just absolutely beautiful. Uh, the print, like it, it's almost like an all over print. I've seen versions with like the print going all the way to the, to the hem and, and, and even further than that. Um, yeah, it's on a blue grape tag, but it's completely faded. Um, yeah. What else to say on the back? Um, yeah, I think you guys, you know, this tea. Nice. Um, a slight fade. That's what I like. Um, yeah. Big yeah. color. Also. Um, yeah, it's, it's 
it looks super it's nice. amazing. I, I like when the colors are thick. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I don't care if it's like single stitch or not, but if the color is good, I mean, I, I'm, I'm down for it. Nice. And is, so, this, yeah. is this a tee that you wear like quite often? Or? Um, this tee not too much because I'm not like like usually I wear tees of bands that I that I listen to, so yeah. or like that I know more of. I mean, Sepultura is a great band. I mean, Brazil, absolutely mm -hmm. fantastic. But I just don't listen to them that often, so. Whenever I wear a tee like that, I just rather. It's always like an interesting kind of conversation, right? Like, do, do you do you mind seeing people wearing stuff that they don't listen to or, or they don't even know? Yeah, does it really mean, matter for you? Yeah, I mean, it doesn't really matter for me. Like, like it's everyone's choice. Like, everyone has to decide mm -hmm. for themselves. But um, in, in the end, like, whatever you, I think what you should wear is the the, the thing that you that you like. Yeah. Um, but if you don't listen to a band, uh, I'm not sure if you actually like the tee or just like the design of it. Yeah, I think it's you just, can wear like a tee for the graphic. Yeah, yeah. Just, But as long as it, if you don't buy like the H&M, exactly, or whatever, exactly, if, if yeah. you buy the real thing and you just like the graphic, it's fine. Yeah, me. I, mean, I mean, for me it's fine yeah. too. Like some, some tees I have that, that, that I don't like, like from bands that I don't listen to, um, mm. I like for the design, for example. Yeah, yeah. Um, some designs, they, they, they like, um, go beyond the 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 yeah, yeah, band. Artists, like like, like, yeah, like their music sure. may not be that good, but their designs are crazy. So yeah, yeah I mean f for me it doesn't really matter. But yeah, I, I can get what some people hate on people yeah, that are wearing course. Nirvana T, for example, or Metallica T, and they don't know who Kurt Cobain is. Or, no, or yeah. yeah, I mean yeah. He People think they're still he's still alive. Yeah, <laughs> still alive. yeah, it's in the Yeah, it's from the latest album. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, the latest album was in 1993 yeah. or something. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> so, All right, I can see that. Um, so next, next, next up, yeah. So this is a bit of a Dutch uh, touch to my uh, selection of ten tees. Uh, this is a band from uh, Schiedam. Uh, I'm from like Rotterdam, the area. Uh, Schiedam is a city that neighbors Rotterdam. Um, yeah, I mean. Black metal <laughs> to the max, I think. Sure. Uh, what I like about black metal is that their logos and their tees are so dark. So, yeah. lo so like that that fits with my style because I like avant-garde wear, and avant-garde mm -hmm. is often associated with dark wear, for example, like Rick Owens. Um, and and these tees, like usually, they're black uh, and white or white and black. Um, and their their prints sometimes they're even too much for me. Like don't don't get me wrong, yeah, some yeah, of the yeah. prints they, they they feature like. People getting beheaded and stuff like yeah, it's some, crazy. Some crazy stuff like fuck, fuck. Yeah, Jesus yeah. Some, exactly. Know, like, it's just, it's just, it's just insane. Yeah. But this tee is kind of low key. So yeah, you see like um, it's single stitched. Uh, it has the like medium thick collar, I think, but I don't mind that too mm -hmm. much. Uh, on the back, it has the tour dates. Uh, and what I like is that is these are only Dutch or maybe also Belgian yeah. uh, places. Um, and they actually featured some other artists that you might know, Entombed. Um, yeah, while we're recording this video, last week, I believe the, uh, the former frontman, that they, they, he died, so rest in peace to him. Oh, shit. Um, peace to him. And this band, I don't know that much, it, it's, not, it's not that uh, well known, but neither is this band. So, I mean, <laughs> for me, uh, yeah, I, li I like when people don't really, um, yeah, well, no, no, no like, like when it's underground, you mm -hmm. know, it's like, Sometimes I like wearing like a Metallica tee and then people will be like, oh, it's a Metallica tee. But when you're wearing this tee, people sometimes be like, hmm, what's that? You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. It can be like, yeah, nice. I don't know. It's just, just goes with everything. So, yeah. Yeah, so it's a cool shirt. Yeah, I really like it, especially when it's from the Netherlands. So, like, you don't see a lot of bands from the no. Netherlands that are that big, uh, or especially with band tees. Or with good graphics. Or with good graphics indeed. Yeah. Like I had some tees from like the Golden Earring, like mm -hmm. yeah, you guys made it may may know Golden Earring because it's one of the biggest bands from the Netherlands. Yeah. Um, but their graphics they're not that special. I mean they had some tees like merchandise back mm -hmm. in the 80s and 90s, but whenever I see those graphics I'm yeah. like yeah it's not that special. They didn't hire like a artist like like for example Metallica did. And the blanks that they use are yeah, no. they're, they're not that great quality. Like no. the, that's the thing with, with vintage tees is that there's a huge difference, I think, with uh, tees from the US yeah. and from Europe. Uh, I'm not saying European tees are uh, worse than American tees, but they're just different. No, like, I think European bootlegs can be nice sometimes. European bootlegs yeah. can be very nice indeed. Yeah. Like, like when you have like the, the blank tag and like, like mm -hmm. just, just I, I don't know, it just, the quality is not that great, but the bootlegs they age very well. I think. Yeah, sure. So they, they when they crack up, they're like like for example the tee I'm wearing, it's a bootleg from Megadeth, but you can barely see it because it's all faded and, and mm -hmm. cracked and stuff. But I like that about vintage tees is that you can 
like beat them up and just go to a festival and just totally get them covered in beer and yeah, it just yeah. it doesn't matter like if you're if you're hanging this out in the sun for weeks and it fades it yeah just, maybe know, it's even getting better you know? it, it even gets better so yeah that's what i like about about the the vintage uh, teas yeah that they sure. just age well usually yeah the more holes the more fade yeah right? exactly like yeah. like and, and a lot of my my customers they, they they like that too so my my customers they they usually like ask me oh do you have some faded teas or do you have teas where the color is all like mm -hmm. crack, cracked up and, and all that, like it has holes in it and i'm like oh are you really looking for that and they're like yeah yeah, yeah. i don't want a dead stock tea or something no, no, no. while some other people they say yeah i want a tea that's in mint condition so i can maybe distress it myself even so yeah a lot of things with if it's too distressed like the fit maybe it's off or, or yeah and also if you, if you buy it from a picture and you cannot try it on it's sometimes kind of hard for people i think just to calculate how it will fit my body yeah that's it really fits me that, that's the thing like that, that's the thing with, with like vintage sellers in general i think that people get attracted to uh vintage sellers on like instagram or websites yeah, or something yeah. because they often give like accurate descriptions and their photos are often like yeah what you see is what you get yeah uh, i'm not saying vintage studios they they allow returns for example i mean yeah i don't oh, really? know how about you i think you you accept them but yeah we accept i know them, a yeah. lot of people or a lot of vintage sellers that don't accept returns and i even think in, in the netherlands uh you're obligated by law yeah yeah if I mean, you sell something law, through a website yeah. if whether it's vintage or not you need to yeah, well, it's like it's, it's like double yeah. because like when, double, when, yeah, when, for example, you go to some vintage stores in Amsterdam, for example, where we are now, um, and you go into the store and they say like, okay, when you buy something, you yeah, can't yeah. return it. Well, by law, they have to yeah take yeah, it. Yeah, but back. I think if it's online on the website, it's always yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah maybe like yeah the, the thing is like I, I I accept returns, but only if there's like uh, something really off like like. Yeah when the fit is off or they just don't like it. I mean, that for me, that's not really a reason to return it. I mean, you should just determine it uh, in mm -hmm. advance. Because you, you give good measurements. Yeah, good measurements yeah, yeah. and then just, just accurate photos and stuff. And I also think a lot of people don't even read the measurements, you know? Yeah. They, they just go like, all right, this T, size large, I'm a large, exactly. cool, let's, let's go. Yeah, yeah, and, and that, that, that's like a problem, I think, with vintage teas that they vary so much in yep. size. Yeah. So for me, measurements are key. Yeah. And a lot of people, they just don't read it. No, no. Yeah. Oh, well. That, that's why I always give like um, approximate sizings mm -hmm. uh, for, for, for yeah, a yeah. So when, for Dang, example, XL. something is like 30 inch uh, and 24 inch wide, it's often like XL. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that's usually people just look for XL. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, next to you. Um, yeah, we have like a long I mean, sleeve. A long mm -hmm. sleeve. I, I nice. couldn't. I couldn't do this. Um, I couldn't make this video without like uh, sharing a long sleeve with you guys. Mm -hmm. Long sleeve has been like one of the staple things um, on my page. For sure. Uh, and Cradle of Phil, like it just summons everything for me. Like like metal long sleeves and especially Cradle of Phil, they're just so iconic. Um, I mean, it gained a lot of popularity, but uh, because Kanye West wore one, I, I think like five years back or something. Yeah. But still, like this is an example where I don't like the music or I don't listen to the band, but their designs, their their merchandise, like yeah, it's just, crazy graphic wise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just just it's just really up there. Um, yeah, this one is almost dead stock. It's one of my favorite tags, Vampirotica. I, I think you guys know it. Um, yeah, I mean, on the back, it's um, yeah, it, it's not that cruel actually as uh, as some other uh, no. <laughs> Cradle of Filthy. Uh, <laughs> this is doable. This is doable. <laughs> like like so. YouTube shouldn't censor this. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, th that's the thing what I like about this uh, long sleeve that you can actually wear it out because yeah. a lot of Cradle of Filth stuff like Fuck Me Jesus and yeah, yeah, like yeah. that stuff, it's just uh, it's just too harsh for me. I know some people maybe in Thailand or maybe even in the US, they, they wear that they wear that stuff, but yeah. It's kind of hard to walk the street. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and it has the, the sleeve hints as well. That's what I always like about long sleeves when they have like the sleeve hints. I mean, yep. why, else, why, why else take a, a long sleeve? Yeah. Uh, it just adds so much character when it's four sided. Um, yeah, I'm the license to my favorite licensing company, Rasmataz. I, I think everyone knows Rasmataz. Uh, I mean, the quality of, of teas there, there may be, uh, they may not be the greatest, but I mean, their designs, their prints, the bands that they represent. Mm -hmm. Top yeah, notch, really, really, nice, really, yeah. really good. Nice. So yeah, that's uh, one of my favorites. Nice. So yeah. All right, man. And um, 
I was wondering, man, how did you start the company? How did it all gain together? Well, like, um, I never, like, like most, most people that get into Finch, it's like I never would have imagined that, like, starting my own business and it would grow this big. Mm -hmm. I, I would never have imagined. Um, I, like, I, I started wearing vintage tees in like back 2014, 2015, I think. Um, well, back in the day, they weren't even vintage, so I just bought them from like websites uh, that, that just did reprints and stuff on Guild and Tags, yeah, yeah, yeah. Tags. I just wore them because I like the design of them. So, for example, Metallica tees, like the Ride the Lightning tee, you know, mm -hmm. or Master of Puppets tee. I just bought them from those websites. I was like, oh, yeah, it's, for me, it's all the same. Yeah. And then I went to a vintage store in Utrecht. Um, um, and, and, and I went in there and, and I saw these, this rack of vintage sheets and I was like, oh damn, these feel soft and the, this, mm -hmm. this color is so thick. And then I, then I started to appreciate the details and the yeah, differences between like a reprint and a, a true vintage piece. So I bought, I bought a tea there, uh, I believe it was an iced earth tea. I, it's a very unknown mm -hmm. brand, but I bought it there and I just wanted to wear it every day because it felt so soft, it couldn't wrinkle. Like yeah. some vintage teeth, they just, <laughs> they just refused to, to wrinkle. I mean, mm -hmm. it, 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 was, it was beautiful. And, and, and then like, uh, like I wore it all summer and then after summer and winter, I was like, yeah, I mean, I'm not probably gonna wear this next summer again. So I'll, let's see if I can sell it. So I put it on, on Marktplatz, which mm -hmm. is a local site here, and someone offered me 25 euros. And I was like, hmm, I paid 10 euros for this. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> and so, okay, he bought it. And then I went back to uh, the same vintage store like two weeks after, and I bought like three teas because I was like, hmm, maybe I can make a profit. Um, and I think I kept one of them and the rest I sold, but that was just so I can like justify uh, buying other stuff. Yeah, of course. So back then it was like more to, if you buy uh, three teas and you sell two, you may even have a profit or you have the other one for free, free for example. Yeah, yeah. Like, that's just how it works. Um, and in the beginning, I just sold to like like some, some friends of mine. Um, and, and I mean, for me, like it's still about the, 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 the friendships uh, within the vintage community. Like, yeah. like, like some people, they, they're, they're not like into the vintage community, but, but they like support they support and they want. And then, yeah, and then yeah. they, they don't even have to buy often, but they just, yeah, they, they appreciate you're yeah. there and stuff. So yeah, I have some like like regular customers from the Netherlands that, that I just yeah, I mean you know who you are. <laughs> shout out <laughs> and, to uh, you. Shout out to you. <laughs> and uh yeah, I mean I I literally owe my business to them because mm -hmm. they believed like 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 they believed in my business model, I think, if you can even call it a model, but, mm -hmm. but like they were they were willing to pay fifty or sixty euros. And back in the day for some of the teas I sold. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> if I could come back, I mean, mm -hmm. but everybody starts their way. Yeah, yeah. But like, like you start off cheap, like yeah. uh, cheap. I mean, six euros for some people, it's a lot of money, but mm -hmm. like cheap for a vintage tea. Uh, and then you gradually, gradually build up. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But yeah, in the end of 2016, as I told you before, I started my page on Instagram. Um, and was it? From the get go, and of vintage, or yeah, yeah. Anything? I mean, I, I was first looking for like a name or something because like I, I like inspiration from like some guys in the US or, mm -hmm. or, or in the UK, and they all had these 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 like, yeah, almost rap names, right? Yeah, or <laughs> rap names, or like, like 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 I don't know. They were just like these these names that, that mm -hmm. really could be like a brand on their own. Yeah, and, and I took inspiration from 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 their like Instagram feeds, but not really from their names because I couldn't come up with one <laughs> simple yeah simple as that mm -hmm. so i was like oh yeah i'm from the netherlands so nl and vintage and of vintage so yeah my work <laughs> my, my work that's um, a great handle i think right? yeah yeah i mean it's just like it's very recognizable and, and i think yeah i mean within the netherlands i think i'm quite well known now so yeah, yeah i i don't really mind um that people may think that i'm like mm -hmm. yeah like i don't have a special name or something like 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 burned out or tyranny mutation they're like like these cool names mm -hmm. um but yeah i don't care i mean as long as i just um yeah make great content for the people like buying good stuff and then make of course. yeah and did you first start out the instagram or did you have a website first uh no i first started instagram the website came way after that so i first did it all through instagram um and i think sometimes i just sold teas just to buy new teas uh, yeah. like like everyone else if you, you could just have a stash so in the, at the beginning, of course, I, I didn't even make a profit. I just wanted to post stuff on my Instagram um, because I wanted to grow, you know? Like, yeah, like yeah. if you want to grow, you've got to make good content. 
Um, so yeah, I, I didn't. Sometimes I broke even. Sometimes I even made a loss selling a team. Mm-hmm. Like I think yeah. some guys, yeah, some guys know that 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 sometimes you've got to make a loss first to, of course, in the end, yeah, get more followers and and and, and grow. Um, Especially when you start out, right? Yeah, yeah, when you start out, and back in the day, it was like I was one of the first uh, pages in the Netherlands. I think mm-hmm. there were some other pages, but yeah, they didn't really focus on band tees alone. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah. I mean, and, and then it grew, grew from there. Uh, just nice. 2017 wasn't that that big of a growth, but 2018, 2019, it just grew yeah. almost exponentially, I would say. Mm-hmm. Especially last year, I, I think I gained like 4,000 followers or something. So it's, that's, yeah, I'm but really happy with that. But why do you think that is? Is it because it's getting more popular with the youth or is it because, I don't know, people like how well, you mentioned, like a Kanye or a Travis were uh, vintage tees or, yeah, I think vintage tees they they um, they become more mainstream. So sure. like yeah, you, you see it even in like the fast fashion houses, H and M, Zara. They've been printing on like 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 low it's quality trash. tea, like trash tees, <laughs> and and people buy that stuff. So mm-hmm. there is demand for the designs, obviously. So yeah, they're not buying it because it's great quality. They're buying it because of the design. So sure, yeah. I think the 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 hype is is. is yeah, it's not really a hype anymore, I think. It's just like an established uh, mm-hmm. part of fashion, I think. Especially because um, now with the, with the demand for durable fashion, it's, it's like yeah, rising. Yeah, the whole fast fashion thing is dying, of course. Yeah, I hope it's dying. I mean, yeah, we're I'm not there yet. Not there yet. In, in I the think event. everybody's more conscious, right? Yeah, so like like when you buy a vintage tea, you know that, that like you're not buying it from like someone that has yeah. seen it in, in, in Bangladesh, like a child or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you just know you're buying and a piece of history and you you're buying something that you can like yeah say okay this is durable and yeah. then and the fit the, the fit of course <laughs> the, the, the the fades and stuff that we, we don't even mention that but it's just mm-hmm. like yeah i mean and and of course what, what you were saying like travis and kanye and stuff they they made it more popular yeah especially jerry Lorenzo too from fear of god i think he was the one who like started the hype i think i think so I think Maybe. before that there were some like established vintage stores in, in New York, I, I believe ProCell and, and Round Two in, in, in LA back then. Um, and when he started doing like collaborations with like those back in the day small stores mm-hmm. like like Tyranny Imitation, The Alchemist, I believe, or I don't even remember those those names that, that much uh, that, that good anymore. But I mean, then yeah. it just lifted. It just on a mainstream level, like uh, that did a lot, probably. Yeah. yeah. For sure. With insane pricing, yeah, this price is insane. I mean, the the things that are, the, the the things that he did well was like he he um, uh, he created a demand for like worn out cheese, like with holes mm-hmm. and stuff. Sure, yeah. Uh, and 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 I think that that originated from 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 him and also yeah, like yeah. Kanye and Travis. They wore like trashed out tees as well. Um, but I think I think like um, it it really yeah I mean it really started when. When, when people like Kanye and, 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 and Travis started wearing uh, vintage tees. So, yeah, I, I think it will grow in the next, yeah. uh, next years. I think they expect the vintage market to like so, yeah. triple in it by 2030, I think. Yeah, you even see it in uh, like the Dutch scene, for example. Like a lot yeah, of, a lot, a lot of, of new people. people. I mean, I, I almost support every one that that, that 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 starts i mean everyone deserves a chance to to get established or like 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 just uh, uh do their thing uh, and, and i see a lot of people especially from the netherlands too that, that are doing a great job they, they have a great curation that yep. they, they just yeah i mean they might not have as much stock yet or mm-hmm. as much followers yet. also because it's harder to find it because, oh. <laughs> it's yeah. harder to find here um yeah i mean the netherlands is not that yeah Big of a market for vintage cheese, like yeah. yeah, you should you should source it outside of the Netherlands, the UK, Germany, the US a lot. So mm-hmm. I mean, within the Netherlands, we're a small country, so we didn't have many um, different tours yeah. or something. Yeah, I, I don't know how to explain it. Like when you go no, to the US, true. there were like maybe uh, thirty cities in one tour, and in the Netherlands, they just did Rotterdam or they just did Amsterdam. Yeah, so if yeah, people yeah. went to a certain tour. They like they only could buy maybe a thousand or two thousand of those teas mm-hmm. that were sold then. Yep. And when they pop up, they're like more rare here. I, th- I think. Yeah. yeah sure. And some a lot of people like keep them and. I don't yeah. Know. 
And like 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 that that's the thing too like like when people uh really value uh a certain band they they just don't want to sell that you know no. they just want to get it and that's what gives some vintage pieces their pricing i think for sure and uh, we hear a lot of people just like oh yeah i had that shirt but i threw it away because i didn't fit it anymore I was, yeah i was, I was a teenager shit. back then and yeah i grew older and i, I mean the amount of conversations <laughs> i have with people that say like oh i threw a bunch of shirts away because yeah. they had like holes in them i was like oh my god no yeah yeah, yeah. Is, like, like Nirvana tees, Addison Chains, like all those tees. And I was mm-hmm. like, oh, what, why did you throw that away? And I was like, yeah, yeah, I wasn't going to wear it because it had holes in it. And I was like, it's still worth like hundreds of bucks. Like, it doesn't really matter. So, yeah. Uh, all right. All right. Uh, so, so we'll do the next tees. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Okay. So, next up, um, we have a white tee, actually. I couldn't come here without a white tee no. because white tees, I think, are some of the most underrated band tees. I mean, I get why some people, they get thrown off by white tees. Uh, I mean, they get dirty quick, and especially when a tee is like 20, 30 years old, yeah. they often have stains in them, they often have like yellowing. So, I mean, it's not the best option if you really want a clean look, but sometimes you find tees that are like close to new, like this one. Like, yeah, it's, it's not new, new, but it has some slight yellowing on the under, yeah, yeah. armpit and stuff. But, I mean, white, it just like it, it just has something special, I think. For me, uh, I wear a lot of white tees myself because they go with everything, especially in summer, it's it's, it's better than black usually. Yeah. Uh, and although this is called Black Flag, this band, you know it, uh, punk in the 80s. Um, and this tee is probably my favorite from them. Uh, it's it's a bit small for me, uh, but yeah, back in the 80s, a lot of tees were very small. Yep. Um, but this tee, yeah, I mean, it has been worn by many, many, people and I'm not wearing it because they wore it. I mean, I've seen Eminem wearing a tee like this. I mm-hmm. really wasn't even vintage, uh, but it's just like their, their designs. I think they, most of their designs were from Petty Bon. I don't know if you know the artist, no. um, but those designs are usually quite um, graphic. So like people throwing it, like getting a yeah, gun yeah. in their mouth and stuff. And I like, think Black Flag is one of the best graphics out there. Yeah, yeah. That, I think that's partly due to their um, collaboration with Pettibon, their designs. Um, this one, I think, was designed by, let, let me see, it's uh, Wendell Williams. Never heard of him, but this design is great. I mean, it's just, it's just <laughs> like that. You. It's sh- shout out to you. It's just like that, that perfect tee uh, to, to wear out in summer with like some, some, some nice uh, vintage jeans, for example. Um, it's a bit small, but... Did you ever try to stretch it out? Yes, but... I mean, the thing with stretching out tees is like, as soon as you wash them, they often yeah, like go, go back. back to their yeah. usual size. And sometimes I like to vary in sizing. Like a lot mm-hmm. of people, they just look for XL. Um, but yeah, sometimes I like tees that are a bit more fitted. I don't know, mm-hmm. it just uh, gives more, um, that, the, yeah, it's, it's more dynamic than, yeah. than only wearing oversized tees that are like Vision. up to your knees. And <laughs> I mean, I'm pretty long, but I, I know some guys that are like, like maybe five foot five or five foot six is really really small and when they wear xlt it's like a dress you know yeah yeah, yeah. so yeah i mean it's single stitched um slight really nice. cracking nice color uh yeah it's absolutely amazing it's just it's just not that graphic although it's a middle finger i mean usually i'm in this mood every day so uh, <laughs> <laughs> like these are my rules you know we're, we're walking to amsterdam I'm like i don't care about your opinion no nice. uh, this tea is perfect good one so, yeah um, and up next, um, yeah, this, I mean, yeah. when I saw this tea in person, like I, I bought it from a guy who had it since 1988. I, I believe this tea was released in the Netherlands. Uh, so, I mean, the, yeah. the fade, the, 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 the distressing, it has holes in it. And like, I know a lot of people get thrown off by holes and, 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 and stuff, but I mean, on this tea, it just adds so much character. Yeah, it's just, sure. It's just amazing. I mean, Slayer, perhaps the, the, the their best um, um, works from this album. Um, definitely at the prime of the thrash metal, mm-hmm. like Rise, come up in the late eighties, together with Metallica. Uh, on the back, it has the uh, Rain and Pain. Uh, I don't even know what they say. Do you want to die? Yeah. Do you want to die? No, it's, even from, it's even from '87. But yeah, I mean, the, the fade, the fit, single stitch. I mean, this is this is literally what every guy yeah. wants uh, when getting a, a vintage tee, I think. Yeah. Uh, and especially Slayer, their, their earlier tees, they're like quite sought after. I mean, 
And you don't want to wear a dead stock sleeve shirt, right? No, 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 no. Especially when it's from the age, you don't mm -hmm. want to wear it. Like, like th this tee has been through a lot. Probably, I hope actually that this guy actually brought it to some tours mm -hmm. and, and actually wore this tee there because that's some where it, it belongs, like mosh pits and stuff. And that's why it's maybe like cracked up yep. and faded and stuff. I mean, beautiful. Nice. Do you wear that one? Yeah, I wear it, I've been wearing it like last week once, I think. But now, yeah, I mean, while we're recording this, it's still quite cold. Yeah, so yeah. I might wear it out in the summer, but I, yeah, I don't know. The, the thing with, with this, like I don't wear a lot of color in my like, like in my usual rotation. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, that's just my personal taste. So I might sell it later on, but yeah, I mean, it's so beautiful. I, I don't actually want to sell it. But like when you have something that, that you don't wear yeah, yeah. And, and you just look at it and you're like, okay, this is worth a lot of money. Yeah, or trade it for a piece. Or maybe trade it that, that. for a piece that I actually wear, yes, indeed. Nice. All right, okay. I'll see you another yes. fire one. Another one. Um, Megadeth. I mean, it's definitely a band that uh, I think is underrated. A lot of people, they know. I'm wearing a band right now, a uh, winner tee from the band right now. Um, yeah, I mean, their designs, they're like, I mean, they're all over prints and, and, and some of their 80s prints, they, they go for a lot of money now. Yeah. Uh, and this one's from 1992. Um, I think this is their best works. Uh, some of their best tees, they were, they were from this album on this tour. Uh, and this one, I don't know, it just stands out for me because it's like kind of monotone and in the color scheme, it's like yellow, orangey and stuff. Mm -hmm. And a lot of their prints, they are very bright, like they have like blue, and green. purple, green. Yeah. And although I, I, I like the prints themselves, I wouldn't wear that uh, necessarily for, for myself. But this one, I mean, it's, it's again, slightly faded. Uh, it has a faded tag. I mean, I've seen these on giant tags as well. I mean, I like giant. As long as they're like good fitting and, and, and just yeah, I don't I don't mind if they're like a faded Euro tag or something. No, I don't mean either. And on the back it has the uh, it's kind of quite it unusual is. because these usually don't have the tour dates on them. Uh, the yeah. countdown to extinction tour dates. Um, I didn't even know they only had like two months of touring in Europe. But uh, yeah, I, mean, I even like the back more than the front leg, man, because of the color. Yeah, I'm a I'm a sucker for tour dates myself. So whenever I see a tee with tour dates, I'm like, oh, I gotta have that mm -hmm. because tour dates. I mean, I mean, they just give more sense of time and more like. For sure. I don't know, like, like when when you see tour dates, often you know that they were bought at that tour, like they weren't bought through mm -hmm. maybe like um, I don't even know if they have websites back then, but people could buy stuff and they could get it, could get it shipped. Yeah, yeah. That's why you sometimes see tees without tour dates. So they were just like a promo shirt or like, yeah. I mean, and, and now you know that it's bought actually at the tour and it just gives a sense of how rare some of these tees are because these, this may sound like a lot of tours, but imagine like maybe just back to back to back to back to back. <laughs> yeah, 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 indeed. Like, like, like even my, on my birthday, they were in Genk, which is in uh, Belgium, I believe. That, that's crazy. <laughs> Fine. Yeah, so especially Megadeth. Underrated. Buy more of Megadeth. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Nice. And um, another question, of course. What do you like about the whole Fintech community? How it is um, right now? Days. Yeah, I mean the Finnish community is like I think they're it's it's starting to fragmentize a bit. So like years before before this video, there was like one community I think. Mm -hmm. um, but now I think the Finnish communities are like focused on, on like one specific area, maybe like Southern California or mm. um, maybe upstate New York or. I don't know, in Europe, maybe the UK has a community and maybe Italy, Spain, yeah, part of Asia, of course. Asia has a huge community. I mean, Asia, I, I, I don't even want to go there. I, I probably like, <laughs> I get jealous. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. If I go to Thailand, the, the amount of stuff that people have there is That's crazy. crazy. That's crazy. That's... I don't even know how to get it. I mean, yeah, but it's also like every, every uh, seller from Thailand, you go to their page, it's like banger, 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 banger. It's banger. Like, and, and they can ask money for it it's it's crazy like they, yeah. they, they ask they they, they 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 can ask 100 euros more for a tea than, than me for example whilst i mean thailand no hate to you i love thailand because i ship there a lot yeah <laughs> it's a beautiful country but don't get me wrong i don't i don't know where you get your prices from but some of those prices they're like 
yeah, not overpriced, but yeah, people, if it sells, it sells, but mm -hmm. I don't know how they, how they can like charge more for it than in the US mm -hmm. or in Europe, I don't know. But yeah, I mean, the Vince community now, like, like with, with social media, of course, it's, it's much easier. Like we have like this small community with like sellers from the Netherlands, but mm -hmm. also from sure. Australia. I mean, Alex, you know, <laughs> um, so some guys from the UK, um, even a guy from, um, I believe Southeast Asia too, like Philippines maybe or something. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's, that's what I like that Finnish uh, just sends uh, borders. So mm -hmm. just, just, yeah. It, it doesn't really matter. It, it, it's, it's not really located in one specific area. I mean, there are areas where vintage is, is more of a thing, like in California, you know, LA, huge vintage markets. Um, but yeah, I mean, the thing now with, with shipping and, and just social media is that, that people can just buy vintage whenever, wherever they live, so. That's nice. Yeah. Yeah, especially with Instagram, it made it a lot easier to just buy from people all across yeah, the world. Yeah, and, uh, exactly. You know, and and I would like support ship, each other. Yeah. And, and now I feel like, like I've been like investing more into uh, shipping options like, like DHL Express and then, mm -hmm. and getting more contracts with them to, to, to get cheaper vintage options or shipping options to, to, to sell teas to anyone. Yeah, to anyone. make it more easier. Of course. Yeah. yeah. And I think shipping is, is one of the, the, the key things I think with, with, with selling vintage. Yeah, for sure. If the shipping is like 30 bucks and it takes three weeks, people are not gonna even consider buying it. No. But if, if it's like 15 euros, and it goes to the US in two weeks, or maybe if it's like 25 euros and it's there in two or three days. Mm. Oh, yeah, mean, that makes a huge difference. Yeah, yeah it course, makes a huge yeah. difference. I, th I think you see all those memes, you know, like, like when they say like, oh, it's, it's, it's 10 euros and 10 euros shipping, they're like, hell yeah, no. Yeah, it was a drink, right? Like, yeah, it was a drink and it's <laughs> yeah. like 20 euros with free shipping, they're like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So uh, I think that's that's actually true. I think I think the cheaper the shipping is, um, the, the, the more, um, motivated people are to actually buy it or like want yeah. to buy it. Yeah, we offer like uh, free shipping within Netherlands. Yeah, like yeah. Above a certain amount globally. Yeah, so like, like yeah. just to make it easier for people. Like yeah, I think that's a good thing. Like over 200 or 250 euros, you get like free shipping worldwide. I mean, yeah, I think it's 150. Or 150 on our like, side, I think something like that. Even, even better. So, yeah. Oh, well. And um, what is something you would like to see differently in the community or, or dislike maybe? Um, I dislike that, that some people, they think they're above the rest. Um, I mean, it's in every community, the sneaker community, the, 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 yeah, of course. the avant-garde world. There are people that think as, uh, of themselves as elite or like elite sellers. Yeah. So they, ju they just like unfollow everyone and then they think like, oh, I have 10K followers, I'm gonna I'm gonna like pretend that I'm like the best here or, or like like I have these great teas or this great source or and and you cannot touch it. Like like mm -hmm. I've had some arguments with people that, that like like that messaged me and they were like, Hey you buy from that guy too, so I'm gonna block you because unless you stop buying from them and I was like, No, it's like a free market, you know, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it doesn't really matter and then they they, 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 they block me and then they block others too. Um, even within the Netherlands, there are some guys like I'm not gonna throw out names or like like call them out. But there are some guys that are like not really liked by the rest of the vintage community. I mean, yeah, it's just just how it is. Mm -hmm. Like, no, of course, I think it's in every whatever kind of community or whatever. Yeah, I mean, like some some people they just think they're above the red because they've been in there for a long time, or mm -hmm. they, they they think they're they're doing it better, or I don't know. Yeah. That's what I don't like about the vintage community. Um, other things are maybe that, that some people, they overhype certain teas. Mm -hmm. So, you know, yeah, like, yeah, I mean, if people pay for the teas, it, it's fine by me. I mean, if you get a huge ass mm -hmm. uh, markup, fine by me. But if, if a tea, like for example, a, 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 um, a Disney tea, like an all over Disney tea, yeah, so the is like 6K, 6K or something, or something I mean, right? I mean, props to you, I, it's, it's great, but. I mean, that kind of ruins the, the market for the, those teas a bit because back like two, three years ago, I mean, they were worth 20, 30 bucks. I mean, you could just buy them anywhere. Yeah, and people think that when you find a Disney tea now, it's like, all right, it's a Disney tea, it's all over print, so. Yeah, it's, be it's like worth a lot of money. So, one gate, but, and, and, but yeah, like they, they make uh, the exceptions seem like they're like normal. And mm -hmm. that's, that's the thing with vintage. Like, 
people can say, oh, this tea is like, oh, it's like a promo, it's one on one, but there's, there will always be another tea out there. There will yeah. always be another tea that's like um, better than that tea or maybe, maybe, yeah, I don't know. It's just, I don't like the, the fact that, that people really, um, yeah, overrate teas a lot and, and yeah. that drives up the price. I mean, for us, it's great, but we also have to like be realistic with our customers uh, course, in order yeah. to not overcharge. I mean, I hate overcharging for people. Yeah, the, I hate to say to people, oh, this tea is 700 euros. And they'd be like, mm -hmm. oh, shit, that's that's a lot of money, you know? But it's always something new. If you read a, a rep tea or it's Disney now and it was, I don't know, what is it, NASCAR maybe uh, yeah. a year ago. and. What's yeah. that next? I don't know. But, I, I don't know what's next, you know, man. The, the, that's the thing with the vintage market. It's so But it comes and dies, right? The same tea could be like one year, it could be like a thousand euros. Yeah. And then, and then, and then, then like, the hype dies. And then yeah, it's and then it's, then it's back to like, I don't know, 152. Oh, well. Wow. Yeah, anything. But yeah, the, that's also the fun part of vintage. Like, it's so, like, the market fluctuates. Yeah. Well, not a lot, but it fluctuates over years. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, when you buy now a Nirvana piece, you're probably paying. Well, the most <laughs> yeah, yeah, for it, uh, maybe it dies out a bit in a year or something. Well, not dies out, of course, but it, it lowers the price again. Uh, Alice and James teas are really up there right now. Yeah, um, like the whole, yeah, uh, the whole indeed. Uh, even Pearl Jam has been rising. Cradle filth. I mean, this long sleeve. Mm -hmm. uh, two years ago, I would probably. Um, get a hundred euros for it. Now I can maybe ask like two hundred euros for it, so it doubled. Mm -hmm. And some cradle fill teas, like with the the vestal masturbation teas, you know, the, the long sleeves and stuff, the, the with the red details. I've seen them getting sold for seven hundred euros on, on 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 Etsy or eBay, yeah, and I was yeah. like, what? Seven hundred euros? I sold those for two hundred mm -hmm. like three years ago. Yeah, it's the same with like the anime teas. Anime like, teas, uh, yeah. Akira is Akira. Yeah, it's crazy. The, the, to the roof. To the roof, indeed. Yeah, yeah. and when, I think uh, the big come up is like uh, movies and then series now. Movies now, culties, indeed. Like, like, like I used, I, I had a, a dirty Harry T. I, I don't know if you know that movie. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's a very old movie, and I mean, I, I was thinking, yeah, maybe I can sell it for like 30, 40 bucks. No one wants it, and sold it for like one hundred and forty bucks. And I was like, what, what? what? Well, why does this? Why did it sell for so much? Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I put it up in my story, and I got like five people jamming me, like, "Oh, how much is this tea? I really want it." And I was like, "Oh, it's just a movie tea, right? It's not a bad tea." And they were like, "Oh, I don't care. I want a movie tea." So, All right. I mean, yeah. I don't what, know. What's one of your your craziest uh, come ups? Mm, yeah, this is a tough one because I've had a few. Um, I, I once had a, a Wu Tang tea, a bootleg tea. I think I know it was the sh about. yeah, I think it was a shadow boxing one from nineteen ninety five. It was like a a collaboration with, with I don't even know the what what, 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 tour, what tour or something it was. Mm -hmm. It was a bootleg tea. It was on a Bay Bay uh, Bay, Bay Club Bay, Bay Road, Road, Tank, yeah. Club, yeah. And um, I mean, I bought it for like one hundred and fifty bucks, which may seem a lot of money for some people, and then I sold it for like. Eight hundred dollars, and that's like that's low in today's market. Like mm -hmm. now, I probably probably could have asked maybe double that. Yeah, for but sure. Like that's yeah, I got like three or four years ago. So I mean, yeah, come up. yeah, that was a great come up. Um, I also had a tea from um, from Dr. Dre, the Passat one. The, mm -hmm. the uh, you know the uh, in Bud we trust. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I bought that one for like two hundred euros or something, and then I sold it for uh, seven hundred euros. I mean, it's, it's not to brag, but it's just nice to yeah, have course. like 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 come ups like that. Um, but yeah, usually the margin is anywhere between uh, thirty and sixty percent. Like mm -hmm. that, that, that's a margin that I usually uh, maintain, so that I can like if I put teas on sale, I can still make a profit or break even on them, um, and not to overcharge. Like yeah. uh, usually when I buy a tea, yeah, your pricing is always fair. You can always get a fair pricing going on. Yeah, usually yes. Yeah, so, well, I think it's the uh, that's the thing with, with with sellers in the Netherlands. I think they're always like realistic with it. Mm -hmm. uh, like with you guys, with with uh, with Joshua from Bentis. I mean, they they all have very fair prices. I mean, uh, yeah, yeah. That's that. It's a it's a difference from from some like flea markets in the U.S. or in, in mm -hmm. Thailand or something like or people or like even on live live uh, flea markets like the virtual flea. I don't know. People pay two hundred percent more than that. Price is going 
It's yeah. crazy. If it works, it works. If it works, it works yeah. indeed. But yeah, I think maybe we should like get like a, a virtual flea market in Europe or something. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe we could set something. Yeah, up. yeah, yeah. Maybe, maybe. Or maybe like a like a like a pop up store or something. Like, because yeah, I, I think like that that's uh, that's uh, yeah that's one other thing that I don't really like about the Vinci community now is that that a lot of people they don't uh, invest in in actual um, interaction with 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 mm -hmm. their customers. I know, like for example, my audience is usually in the US uh in asia a lot um and yeah i mean i cannot really interact with them because they live so far away but for example you guys you have a lot of uh people clientele in, in amsterdam and in Israel, yeah. and you guys did like some great pop-ups in amsterdam i mean it, it's, Thanks, it's yeah. definitely not uh really uh yeah it, it's not cheap to like rent the place no. here and just uh i mean it, it's a lot of effort too you you gotta be there the whole day you gotta uh, make sure everything is set up right, yeah. uh, promote it well, and then yeah, it, it works. So it works good for us. It's 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 the only only time we have with with, with the people that are really buying. Yeah, it's yeah. So the, the, the that's what I really like about well, well, that you really create that moment of of interaction between the, the customer and, and you guys. So you can yeah. really like tell a story about behind the tea, and that's that's one thing that that I really like about teas that you can really tell a story about them like yeah just say oh yeah this tea is from 92 and then uh this guy i bought it from he, he got it at a tour in, mm -hmm. in that, that city and i mean yeah for a lot of people that does not used to buy a vintage they need like a backstory they want to know like oh is it really from the, the original tour yeah is exactly it, uh, what is it like, like sometimes more? it even adds value like like yeah, uh, sure. uh, teas that have like signatures on them Mm -hmm. And for me, those are the the, the coolest teas that, that that you can have, like signatures from the actual band members. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Crazy! It's actually nice. actually crazy. Yeah. Can you tell us like a crazy story, like you've been to like on, on a hunt or, or something that uh, happened? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I can tell a story. I mean, I've been. Um, I was on a trip with friends. Uh, I was to uh, Europa Park. I don't know if you know it. It's like a big team park in Germany. And we went uh, on a on a day trip to uh, Strasbourg. It's a city mm -hmm. in France. Yeah. And I went to this very like 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 usually when I go to a new place and, and I'm in the center, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna Google a vintage store just just to have, just to check. You never know. You never mm -hmm. know. And nine out of ten times, you'll be like, oh, there's nothing here, or no. it's just just crap quality. And I googled that, and I was like just outside of the center, and I had to convince my friends to come, come with me. Come with me, okay? I just want to go to the store. They were like, "Oh no, we want to go back." And I was like, oh, "No, no, just just come with me. It only takes ten minutes." So we went to <laughs> well, I went into the store. They waited outside, mm -hmm. and I went into the store, and I was like, "What? What?" And that store was literally the coolest vintage store I've ever been to. It was like a very, it was a small store, but. Mm -hmm their selection they had like these, these crazy biker jackets from like these bands too like like some from from megadeth from metallica and on the back and they were all genuine like like real vintage and had like a wreck and those vintage tees were crazy and the price was it was like a steal like that guy he would he was yeah. like the ultimate rocker guy mm -hmm. like, like he, he had this mustache and he had like a very tight tee and like yeah, yeah, yeah. high-waisted jeans and like with his cowboy boots and stuff. So he came up to me, he was like, oh yeah, I have some teas uh, in the back as well. And so he came out with a box and I had to just pick, pick, pick. And like, how many teas did you work away? I think like 25 or something. Oh, and, like from that store. And he was like, oh yeah, yeah, I'm just telling you to, I don't care. He was French, of course. He, mm -hmm. His English was not that great, but I think I paid like, like maybe three, 400 euros, but it was like 25 teas and those teas were really, really great. Like, like Nice. Insane, and he he was having a day of his life. I think he never yeah, sold that much in a day. <laughs> and so, did you ever went back to him? No, unfortunately, not. I really want to go back to the store. I mean, um, I'm not going to throw out names because then you guys know. Um, keep your sources secret, guys. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, want, I really want to go back. But Strasbourg is just like a bit too far. It's five hours drive, yeah. and I mean, I don't even know now if he still has those teas. I mean, no. people might have known since then. Um, and, and 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 still like like I think people now are starting to realize what they have, you know, especially vintage stores. Of course, you see yeah, it in yeah. the Netherlands, they 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 often don't hang out the the good teas anymore. They or they rise the prices a lot. Mm -hmm. um, I once went to London. I think London was one of the first cities where I realized that even the well the the, the bad quality vintage stores they know what they have. So I went into that store and they had like this crazy Beatles tea and then uh, some Metallica teas. And I was asking for the price and I, oh, he was like, oh yeah, it's right there. And I was like, oh shit, it's like a hundred pounds for like a tea that I couldn't even sell for 70 mm -hmm. euros. So 
I mean, yeah, and people starting to realize, I think now, just that that, that these are worth something. So I've seen now in the last year that, that the prices, even people that before didn't know what they had, they now like can ask more for it. Yeah, So sure, you yeah. see like biddings and then, okay, the bidding starts at 75 euros. And I'm like, hell no. Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> hell no. <laughs> All right. So, yeah. I think it's time for uh, for the last uh, couple of teas, man. Yeah, sure, Let's man. See some, uh, some great stuff. Yeah, so next up, another white tea. Uh, I got this tea very recently. Uh, yeah, this is... I mean, you probably wouldn't guess it from the print or whatever, there's no band on it, but Foodie Lounge, you guys probably know Foodie Lounge, one of the biggest tours of uh, the Rolling Stones they did in Europe. Um, and this tea, it had a great story because the guy uh, who sold it, he said like he bought it at the De Kuip, which is a stadium in Rotterdam, where, uh, where I'm from. And um, I mean, I've been Googling this tea for the last couple of days now, just to see if I can get any info on it. I could not find a single example of this tea anywhere. And it's licensed. It's like it's like li it's uh, broken licensed. It's licensed to a, a artist, Michael Roberts, I think. Um, and it's such a cool tea. I mean, it's from not, '95, right? It's from '95, yeah. indeed. Um, that's when they were in the Netherlands, I think. It has the sleeve head. Best color ever. I mean. Thick and tight. I mean, <laughs> don't get me wrong. It's, it sounds a bit gross, but I mean, for me, that's that that that, that those are the best. Uh, a faded tag. Don't know what it is. Probably a euro tag, like a blank tag. Um, it's a great shirt. Man. Yeah, I absolutely love it. And the fact that it's white and still like mm -hmm. in reasonable condition, like it has some small stains on it. But did you already wear it? Um, no, I didn't wear it yet because yeah, the weather wasn't really uh, mm -hmm. yeah inviting for that. But I mean, I'll probably wear it out a bit uh, in the next couple of months if COVID allows us. It's it's uh, it's uh, it's a bit shit right now, but yeah, absolutely love it. Doesn't have a backside by the way. Bit of a shame, but I don't care. This tea no. is just this so is fun good. Curve. It's so good. Like, um, but yeah, if if I don't get to wear it, I'll probably sell it soon. To me, maybe maybe <laughs> maybe you, you never know. <laughs> Well, yeah, that's uh, that's great. I've nice. said to you guys before. I mean, in the last sure. in, in uh, episode two, I think uh, you showed yeah. even the tea that, uh, or like you guys yeah, showed the tea that I think uh, Ruben had a yeah, public enemy tea. Yep. still one of the best uh, teas that I that I had in my my opinion. I mean, it was it was it was not uh, a, a, like overpriced or something. It was just like the feel of it, the, the print and stuff. It's it's a wrap tea, of course. Wrap teas are always good. Mm -hmm. uh, still one of my favorite teas that I own, but I just didn't wear it myself, so. No, I mean, yeah, yes, it's a good tea. Okay, so well, next up, um, this tea, the Jimi Hendrix, or oh, Jimi Hendrix, he's, he's, he's a legend. He's an absolute legend. I mean, the thing with Jimi Hendrix is that all of his teas, uh, save for some teas like from Woodstock and stuff, like those are like, like really up there, they they, they just they just so sought after, uh, but most of the teeth are reprints. So this was like from um, when he, he got a Hollywood star, I believe, in, uh, in yeah, LA. Yeah, the Walk of Fame in nineteen ninety one. Yeah, that's the date. Um, yeah, it's just Very crazy. Sure. I mean, the the the, the it's on an Onida tag uh, XL. It's a bit uh, broken, but I don't care. Did you have the one for, this one for sale one time? Uh, no, well, no, I had another Jimmy. Uh, I had many Jimmy T-shirts, yeah. so, but this one I, I haven't, I haven't even seen. I've seen one with like uh, bleach all over it. I think on, on grilled, but uh, I haven't seen like the clean version of this. Um, single stitch, slightly faded, and on the back, it's yeah. I mean, Five. it's colorful, and that's exactly what Jimi Hendrix is uh, supposed to be. I think for a team. Um, it just represents him, yeah. his, uh, his ideas, his, his, his like flower power, you know, like the, uh, the yeah. era where, where he was creating. Uh, and he's an all-time legend, arguably, arguably the best uh, guitarist ever. Yep. And uh, this tea really uh, yeah, amplifies for me the uh, significance he has, because yeah, it's a Hollywood of course. Hall of Fame star. I mean, yeah, he deserves it more than anyone else. And is this something you would wear? Yeah, definitely. I would wear this. Um, the thing is, like some teas. Uh, yeah, I mean, it might sound a bit. Uh, that's a more on my business side. But some teas, I'm like, uh, I'm afraid of wearing because mm -hmm. I'm, I might damage them. Not in a sense that of holes or stuff, but more like stains or like yeah, I might yeah. like uh, rip them or I don't know. Like like mm -hmm. sometimes you you have a tea and you're like, okay, this tea is worth a lot of money, um, and and 
you just don't want to wear it because you know that eventually you might want to sell it again. Yeah, yeah of course. I mean, yeah. same with sneakers, right? Same with sneakers, for example. When you wear, uh, when you have this crazy sneaker, but you have you have you paid like a thousand euros for it, mm -hmm. and you know you maybe can get fifteen hundred euros for it, yeah, you yeah. just don't want to wear it because yeah, you know you might step in in, in mud or, or like it gets dirty or, or someone someone steps on your shoe. They don't do that. <laughs> so yeah, I mean yeah. That's that. That's the thing. Right? The same with this tea. I'm probably gonna sell it uh, in the next couple of months, just because. Yeah, I, maybe I, I, wear, I wear it out. Uh, yeah, it's a great shirt. Yeah. It's one of my favorites. I think that you brought out. Yeah, one of my favorites too. But I think my fa my total favorite is the next one, and that's this one. I mean, it wasn't at the front for a reason. Uh, well, typo. Yeah, black number one. Their best works. And this is my favorite tee from them. Um, I mean, they, they had some crazy long sleeves as well. They had some crazy other tees, but this one just, uh, I don't know. It's just like, it's, it's not really that, that, that the design itself is, is, is that special or something. I mean, it's just like the whole atmosphere around mm -hmm. it. It's like a bit, it's like slightly dark, but it's not over, overly done. Um, it has like a contrast color. It's like, even it's like a greenish. Or? It's like an olive green almost. It's like faded. This is one of the most faded tees I've ever had. It's, it's on crazy. a faded blue grape tag. I mean, judging by the color and stuff, it's blue grape. It's under license to blue grape. Uh, well, double stitch, I don't care. I even like it when the double stitches, uh, they are like so I'm contrasting. Sure. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, it's just, then it doesn't matter if it's single or double, or double stitch in my opinion. On the back, uh, this blood's for you. Yeah. The, the band members of Typo, I mean, it's just iconic. I've worn this tee, uh, yeah, I, I think five times now, and I'm probably not gonna sell it anytime soon, unless someone really throws me a really good offer for it. So uh, maybe uh, <laughs> you're watching, but yeah, I mean, nice. Nothing else to say about this tee. It's just it, it just refuses to wrinkle as well. It's, mm -hmm. it's so drapey. So yeah, I mean. Absolutely yeah. beautiful. And that fade goes with everything, right? The fade just, yeah, I don't know. It's just nice. For summer, that's perfect because it doesn't get that warm too. Mm -hmm. and, and, and when it's faded, it doesn't really matter if it fades more. Like the more faded, the better, I think. Yeah, for sure. This was a great tea to, to end the show with, man. Yeah, man. It's just, uh, it was a pleasure. Uh, thank you. Thank you for your time. My pleasure to be here. And uh, thank you for your shirts. It was uh, yeah. 10 great bangers. Yeah. I I hope so. I mean, uh... <laughs> yeah, no, it was a good episode for real. Uh, guys, thank you for watching again. Follow NL Vintage. This was Tom. See you next time. Thank you. See ya. Oh, shit, guys. We fucked up. We have one tea left in the collection. And what a tea. I mean, this <laughs> tea, although it's probably not the rarest tea that's out there, probably one of the le uh, least rarest uh, Metallica teas out there. Uh, I mean, one of my favorites. I mean, I've worn this tee many times. Uh, it's slightly faded too. Uh, and it's nice. I, I mean, it's like the silverish on the, on the faces. Yeah, like the, the, the thing that I like about this tee is like that it's so, uh, like, like um, how do you say it? It's, it's like low, low key, you know? Mm -hmm. It's um, easy to wear. It's easy to wear. It goes with everything. Um, Good thick thing, color, yeah. single stitch, uh, faded tag. I mean, yeah. I couldn't care less at this point. Uh, the back side, tour dates again. You know, guys, I'm a sucker for tour dates. Yeah. And the great thing about this tee is it has my logo. And I mean, I took that logo, of course, from them, but I mean, <laughs> claim it, man. Claim it. Talk, talk your shit. I'm gonna claim it. <laughs> but yeah, that snake, I don't know. I don't know even know how I got to that snake. I mean, I think because I listened to a lot of Metallica mm -hmm. uh, and I saw that snake on the Black Album tour, and I was like, oh yeah, that snake. Just I don't know, it's so iconic and, and it just represents everything that I like about like yeah, the, yeah. The, the designs of vintage tea. So I think it really goes well with uh, what I represent. So well, sorry guys for missing this in the in the first uh, in the first part, but yeah, I mean this tea couldn't really miss the, the nope. final edit. So thank all right, you. guys. So again, thank you for watching. See you guys. <laughs>